Hello and welcome to another edition of Grand Canyon University's Canyon Professional Development Wednesday webinar. We are thrilled to have you with us today to discuss a very important subject, I think for everyone, but especially educators right now. And we have a very special guest with us. Maggie Fountain is here today to discuss developing systems thinking in the classroom. So Maggie, if you would tell us a little bit about yourself and your background in systems thinking. I love this topic. Hi, Corey. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, I am a former high school teacher, spent about 15 years in the classroom teaching world languages and social studies, and then started working at a district office as a social studies and world language coach, which I've been doing for the last five years, and also as the professional development. And I think for me, systems thinking is really, I wish I had known more about it when I was in the classroom myself. It's is a term that's come up a lot as we prepare students for our future. And I've been really working with my social studies teachers to help our students develop this kind of thinking in the classroom through some specific strategies and structures that can help them to develop this more comprehensive view to the world that's out there for when they graduate from high school. Wow, okay, that's fantastic because when you say systems thinking, I think because of my STEM background, I think engineering, I think, the design process and how the system works together so that the client sees each part but a finished product. So I cannot wait to hear how this really affects students in the social studies classroom. And as a professional developer, you, I, I assume, work with so many adults who are looking at how to you know, place these puzzle parts together. So very excited to hear what you have to say. And I know that you started us out with this great quote. If you wouldn't mind reading this for us and just setting the stage for our learning today. Sure. It says synthesis is about understanding the whole and the parts at the same time, along with the relationships and the connections that make up the dynamics of the whole. And to your point, Corey, there's a lot of ideas of systems thinking that come out of engineering about the whole project. But I think what we're really recognizing in education is we've tended to teach things in silos. And it's so important for students when they go out into the world to be able to look more globally at the parts, but also the whole for the finished product. And so sometimes we talk about like creating critical thinking or students that can analyze and synthesize, what does that really mean for our students? What do we do to teach them that beyond just what happened in history or what happened, how to speak a second language, but to be more global thinkers so that they're ready for the world after high school? Oh, wow. Okay. Well, thank you, Layla. Akara Glue, I don't know how to say your last name, but this is a really key quote. And I love that you're taking a kind of a fine arts approach to systems thinking. And in the future, I think we'll do something with STEM systems thinking just to put all these puzzle pieces together. So today, folks, we're going to define what is systems thinking. And then Maggie's got us evaluating why you should teach systems thinking in your classroom, regardless of your content area is what I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then how to truly apply this in your classroom. So without further ado, Maggie, take us uh, take us to the next step. So systems thinking, what even is that? And it's, it's a common term that you hear out in the workplace. And it's this idea that if you want to solve problems or really grasp different concepts, you've got to think of the issues all at once, be more big picture, be more holistic. And there's kind of six key fundamental concepts that thinking, um, systems thinking that are out there that you think of connections instead of disconnections. So you move away from this silo that you're looking for the interconnectedness of things. You're thinking of things in a circular pattern, not just linear because everything is connected. Again, back to that interconnectedness. Um, you think of holes, not parts. So I like the puzzle piece there that you think about each piece, but in its greater vision of the whole and that you're using more synthesis instead of just analysis so that you can see all of the ways that these things are interconnected. And then you're not looking at things in isolation. You're looking for relationships. And that's really hard, I think, for a lot of students to grasp these ideas. And so the more that we can work on helping them develop these skills, the better for them. That, that is incredible because, you know, everything goes back to relationships. And we talk about that as teachers all the time. And so to really think about things, you know, of course, you teach high school students or, you, you know, you work with high school teachers and students are always thinking about me, 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 right? <laughs> high school students are all about themselves, but we need to really, you know, ask that question over and over again. How does this uh, relate to the relationship? Wow. Fascinating. Yep. I, I'm, I'm already on board. 
<laughs> well, and so for me, what I think you really can focus on for students, because that's a lot of stuff on that previous slide, but to really focus in on three skills that we can help the students develop. This idea of looking, as you mentioned, Corey, at the interconnectedness of things, helping them to be better synthesizers, and to looking at causality so that they can look at both how things are connected, just like you said, not just me, people are connected and they often see that, but everything's connected. The shirt that they wear is connected to a system that got it there. The bicycle that they might pedal to school on is connected in a system. So how can we help them to find those connections and make them realize the web that exists, that it isn't just one item, that it's all connected. And then at the same time, looking at each of the parts that make part of that web, but then the holistic view. And sometimes that can be really hard for students to step back and see that more global picture to things. And we're in such a global market nowadays and how everything's connected. So to help them to synthesize that and then look at causality, how one thing influences something else. And so as we've seen with supply chain issues may mean you may not be able to get food in the grocery store and for students to understand that there's all these connections out there and they have influence on one another. Oh wow! You you just unpacked so much there. I'm so excited to move uh, move into the the additional parts. I really am fascinated by really connecting this for especially high school students because you know if we are only thinking about ourselves and we're not thinking about others, then the supply chain situation could get very challenging for them. And oh, this is absolutely okay. So we're going to look at interconnectedness, synthesis, and causality. I love it. And there's a lot of ways that we can help students develop this through systems mapping. So a lot of times we've had people do like graphing is a great way to help students to understand how things happen over time. We have this model, like an iceberg model. We can often use like pyramids to help students understand how things move up and down a pyramid. We can use causal loop diagrams, connected circles, but I really want to focus in on one strategy that I think really works well in the classroom and that's hexagons. Ooh, okay. Tell me more. So a hexagon, as you know, is a six-sided shape, and this can be a great way for students really of all ages and in all subject areas to start to evaluate that interconnectedness, causality relationships between a big system. So if you think about something that you're teaching as the system, so am I in social studies? I might be thinking about the Civil War. Nothing in that event happened in isolation. Everything was inter interfacing with one another and making changes on each other. So we want to help students understand that because I think sometimes we tend to teach in isolated um, events and how and they miss that broader picture right of how everything's connected so with hexagons what you can do is you literally use a six-sided shape you put down people places events concepts whatever that might be that you're talking about in this system and that can be defined as whatever your subject matter could be and then students have to work either individually or alone on I particularly I'm sorry individually or in groups and I particularly like groups because then they can talk and they work through it and they synthesize together to look at the relationships between these concepts that you may have put on the hexagons. And it might come out that they start very linear, like that first picture on the left where they see them sort of one to the next, but you hope that they get more to the picture on the right where lots of things are like a honeycomb interacting with one another. And then what you have them do is explain their logic. Why does this touch here and touch there? And the great thing with the hexagon is it can touch on all these different sides. So they can see how lots of different things are related and interrelated and how one thing causes another thing which leads to another thing but that circles back to be interrelated to another so i think this is just a really great strategy for kids to be able to look uh, at like a bigger broader view of relationships so let me ask a couple questions here because this is just fascinating to me just visually and i would say okay so you as the teacher you write down these topics per se so yep. these isolated events and sort of I see kind of in the middle, you kind of give them these isolated topics and then they're the ones who are putting the hexagonal shapes together and where they touch what I'm, I'm really fascinated with this, this image on the right, because I see so much thinking happening outside of these hexagons. And as you said, the honeycomb, and I mean, I have to just think about the STEM concept of honeycomb as um you know as as an insular material and it can it can hold so much more weight so metaphorically it's almost like the honeycomb connections holds more weight in that critical thinking manner. Does that make any sense at all, Maggie? Totally makes sense. And I think that's what it is. And you're getting the students to be more visible in their learning and realize that you're right, that these do carry more weight, that they don't 
as we know in our world, things aren't in isolation. So it helps them to start to see how all of these things connect. Oh my gosh. Okay. So as students are, you know, I see they're in groups here. Do they have, um, like, this is also an, an, an opportunity for them to collaborate because they have to put these connections together. Now you've got four different perspectives. And so students think, well, I see that I see this connection and maybe others don't see that connection, but having those four different perspectives helps make that flow a little bit easier. Is that Absolutely. Correct? I think it's, I think it's really done well when you do have that group conversation and students say, well, I say that Abraham Lincoln should be connected to the Gettysburg address. And that might be an obvious connection that students see, but the Gettysburg connect could be connected to another battle. And then, you know, they're building on all of these events and it helps to open the minds. I think the students that are listening to one another and learning from one another about how people view, because there's no right answer to this. There's no one honey, you know, one set of hexagons that has to be created at the end of the day. It's all interpretation and how you choose to see things, which I think is also a great opportunity to develop that perspective taking that I can take your perspective and my perspective and we can mesh these together and I can see where you're coming from when you explain why you think they should connect that way. So I think it has a lot of great opportunities, not just in content knowledge, but also in social and emotional interactions between students. That's what I was thinking, like bringing in that diversity piece of like, well, I look at this differently because I'm a Mexican-American. I look at this differently because, you know, my parents are African-American. And so all of a sudden you've got diversity just built into your activity. This is really cool. And I really love the fact that it's isolation and then you, they put it together so they can really see how the part relates to the whole. This is this is so awesome, Maggie. Tell us, tell us a little bit more about how we can bring this into our classroom. Yeah, so what can this look like? So here's the thing. It's a great tip and trick for teachers because it's actually pretty easy, pretty low prep and <laughs> high yield for your yes. students. So I always <laughs> like a strategy like that. Yes, um, so ma'am. Basically, all you need is some hexagons on a piece of paper. And you mentioned before, Corey, you can write them down. Or as you get more sophisticated, students can start creating their own hexagons and writing down key events and looking at how they're related. You can have these little arrows if you want to help them when they're first learning to connect things. But um, these are just two easy resources that you can photocopy these papers. And I think they're going to be in the show notes so that teachers can use these and make a quick photocopy, mix, send them out, and you're ready to go. Oh, thank you so much. for. We'll make sure these are in the show notes, folks. You guys are so lucky because Maggie has put an entire folder of resources into the show notes for you. So please don't forget to click uh, down below on those show notes because you'll get all these wonderful resources. And, uh, and tell us a little bit about this uh, resource. If you are more ambitious and want to make your own hexagons, there is a great video from Betsy Potash that explains really quick five minutes how to build this in Google Slides. So she shows you how you can make your own hexagons. So you can also make this a digital activity. We're in such a blended world today. You can go the paper version, you can go a digital version, and you can have these hexagons all spread out on the side and students drag them over and they still do the synthesis and analysis skills. This is great. So a, a simple Google drawing with hexagons and they're off to the races. So you can also look at the system, no pun intended, of how <laughs> the hexagons come into play as an activity in the classroom. So that's pretty cool. And then tell us a little bit about the hexagon generator. Yeah, so this is a great free resource. Don't we all love a free resource as teachers um, oh. from Hooked Ed that you can type your terms in and it makes the hexagons for you. So if you don't want to use the, the ones I've got, this is another great site that you can go to that will make them for you. Oh, this is so great. Again, we'll have all of these in the show notes, folks. And you know what? what's even cooler is that Maggie, you're going to create an entire course in our Solutions to Go platform based on systems thinking. I'm sure she'll put many more resources in there. So we are so excited for that. And I know that I have taken away a ton just in a very short amount of time. So I, for one, am going to sign up for your course at our Solutions to Go platform. Um, I know it's not going to be ready right away, but after the holiday season, perhaps we'll get that up on the platform. And, and, and I will definitely be taking that because systems thinking is fantastic for the STEM work that I do. And now I can really relate it to the fine arts piece as well. So, wow. I, I just can't thank you enough for, for your expertise today. And uh, there is the canyonpd.com website, folks. So quickly head over there after you hit the show notes 
and you will be able to see all kinds of courses that that correspond with system style thinking. Remember, our why is to empower, educate, and inspire our community so they take action to fulfill their purpose and to serve others. I hope that you all are in the same bucket to be able to serve your students with systems thinking and that interconnectedness. Uh, don't forget to connect with us on social media. We are at GCU K-12 ED, and we are also, um, here on this YouTube channel, we've got lots more detailed information for you, different tips, tricks, and Wednesday webinars. Maggie, thank you so much for being on that's with us today. We are so fortunate that you joined the team here, and we're looking forward to that course. Thanks so much for sharing hexagonal thinking, systems thinking. Thanks, Corey. Thank you so much for having me. It was my pleasure. We're excited. Take care.